So after my night hike last night, I made it to KY490. I'm not sure how many trail miles I did. I'll have to add that uh, as a note. Um, this camp is supposed to be an emergency use only. And the next camp is um, five, six miles away. So uh, considering my circumstance, that seemed like emergency use to me. There is a fire pit. I ended up cowboy camping last night, so I didn't put my tarp tent up. I didn't have dinner. My stomach is growling already this morning. Uh, I did a makeshift bear bag, mostly to keep small critters like mice out. Uh, literally right next to... And here's why it's emergency only. Did you see that? So you're really, at this camp, you are exposed to the traffic. People can see you. Um, you can see them. I probably got here about 9.30ish last night. Um, there was traffic for about 30 minutes. Pretty constant traffic. And then the traffic went away. So it's about 7.10 a.m. right now. And the traffic has been picking up since about 7. So I uh, hung my socks in this tree to dry. And again, my bear bag is literally right next to where I was sleeping. I haven't seen any signs of bears at all in, since Laurel Lake. So uh, I have a water source right there. I didn't have dinner last night. Uh, the other thing is, you know you stink if you are laying sleep and your own funkiness wakes you up in the middle of the night um, another thing so I came from that direction by the way there's a sign right here that says uh, totally Trace Trail number 100 Wildcat Mountain Monument, 8 miles, U.S. Highway 25, uh, I can't tell what that says, and Interstate Highway 75, 12 miles, so it's a uh, pretty good hike yesterday. Let's see, if uh, Interstate 75 is 12 miles, and I started 5 or 6 miles before that, I had pretty good, pretty good trail mileage in today. My uh, legs don't feel too bad. However, a couple of times last night when I went to lay down, or if I turned in my sleep, I, uh, I got really dizzy, like... Like, um, I can't remember what the word is. I'll have to post it in a note. Um, I don't know what was causing that. Um, almost like people that are afraid of heights. That, that like dizziness you get like at the edge of a cliff. Um, it happened to me numerous times. And also, since I was cowboy camping... At one time in the middle of the night, I woke myself up choking as if I inhaled a bug or something. <laughs> there was actually something caught in my throat. I couldn't get it out for anything, so I took a drink of water, and uh, that was the end of that. So I don't know if something fell out of a tree and I inhaled it, or a bug. 
Um, it's pretty crazy. But uh, I'm going to try to... Uh, I'm going to try to wash up in this stream. And I might have last night's dinner for breakfast. So yesterday I talked about how <clears throat> pretty much all day was forest service roads, gravel roads, asphalt roads, except for the last couple miles between uh, Wildcat uh, Memorial and where I camped at. And uh, looks like the first several miles of today is going to be asphalt roads I'm coming up on um, Rock Castle River Bridge and then I go right on KY 89 and uh, I'll update you when we get off of asphalt one more thing <clears throat> I got up at 6.45 and intended to uh, break camp, get breakfast as early as possible, but um, some rain started falling. And I basically had my beef stroganoff, which was last night's dinner for breakfast, because by the time I got to camp, I was just beat. I did not care to eat anything. So uh, I had dinner, last night's dinner for breakfast this morning. And uh, I ended up leaving camp at about 9.09, .09, and it's 9.37 now. So I've gone from 121.53 to 123.12 in 20-some minutes. That's the good thing about walking on roads is you can make good time and the other good thing is you don't have to eat spider webs every 15 feet so there's always that I'm probably going to pan onto this river let me zoom out so it started raining this morning and the whole time I've been walking, so for the last 30 minutes, I hear thunder in the distance. I didn't think they were actually calling for rain, at least when I left until Wednesday or Thursday. Just your typical county bridge. I am walking up a hill and as you can see all the water on the road going uphill means I just went through one hell of a thunderstorm. Now I don't mind rain and I don't mind lightning as long as I'm in the woods and I have some tree canopy but these road walks man you are totally exposed. Uh, <laughs> lightning, thunder all around me. I mean, it poured down. My, I, I found a place that had a little bit of tree canopy, but because you can kind of see the trees are a good several feet off of the road on either side, and they're relatively small trees, so you just don't have a lot of canopy and then on my left is a hill and on the right is a river so I basically just found a spot where the rain seemed like it wasn't as bad it was still bad and I stood there with my umbrella pointed in the direction that the rain was coming down 
Uh, I tried to get the umbrella over the, my pack as much as I could. I don't know if you can see or not. It covers, you know, some of it, but not all of it. Probably anything that was in the back netting pocket um, is in plastic bags, Ziploc bags, with the expectation that we were going to have rain. Um, it's still raining now, but it's let up considerably. And uh, I'm not sure how much it's supposed to rain today. A guy in a little red pickup truck stopped uh, just about a quarter of a mile back there. I talked to him for a few minutes. He said I'll have to, holy crap, see this uh, puddle. <laughs> Definitely no shortages of water on this trip compared to last year. I was trying so hard to not get my feet wet today, but I'm already beyond that point. They're pretty much soaked. And that was just from the splash up during the really bad thunderstorm. I've got my... Uh, Mont Bell jacket and pants that will provide some protection on my legs but not the feet so I didn't put them on I'm not really getting a lot of splash up from the umbrella uh, he told me I was about eight more miles from where I plan to camp and he said I'll have three or more stream crossings. And uh, he said that he thought that the river was actually down, but after this big massive rain, I noticed that uh, when I could still see the river back there a little ways, I saw sticks floating on top. So we'll see when I get there and I'll update then. So now I'm on a forest service road. Uh, my left leg is reminding me every single step about a football injury I had in seventh grade. It's like I take a step with the weight on my left leg and it's like, hey! Do you remember when you broke me in 7th grade? Hey! Do I have your attention yet? You who It's just me sending pain up your leg! Don't you wish we can step on some more rocks? You know... Your foot is probably going to look like raisins by the time you get to camp. Your foot is pretty soaked. So here, let me send a pain up your leg and remind you, Hey, do you remember when you broke this leg in 7th grade playing football? And that's pretty much the way it's been for the last whole two miles. But when I get to the uh, camp spot... I'm definitely going to pass the one that I originally planned to stay at, which was at uh, 129.39. Uh, I'll have to look at my other notes. But I'm going to try to make it to S Tree, I think it's S Tree Campground or something like that. And hopefully, I don't know, there was like one place in that area that had showers and electricity, and the other place didn't. So. I'm going to reevaluate my leg situation when I make it to there. The guy told me, you know, back our ways, it was like eight miles away yet. And if I get there early, I may try to make it to another spot. So I'll update you then. Sorry for the shaky camera. It's my leg. Hey! Do you remember when you broke me? Hey! Hey! Hey!
So I am at mile 129.39. It says Cross Lick Creek. In higher water, you can go upstream at last intersection to pass a good camp with fire pit and cross the creek diagonally to the right. Use hiking poles to check depth. The water was upper thigh high and fast. Use extreme caution when crossing in these conditions. Well, crap. Well, crap. Well, crap. I just passed the Durham, Smith & Jennings Cemetery at 130.84. And let me just say that this is the first time that it has stopped raining in four or five hours. Uh, these roads have just been... <laughs> you kind of see, well, you'll see up here. Like, a lot of the mud puddles cover the whole width of the road. Now, these don't. I'm kind of going up in elevation. You can kind of see that the water's flowing downhill. But uh, it's taken me, at 1 o'clock I crossed... So at 129.39, I crossed the river, and I'm just now at 130.84, two hours later. <laughs> it's been horrible. I've only stopped once for about 15 minutes. Um, some of these, some of these places, I mean, so the water, the ground is so saturated. Look. I don't know if you can see that. That's like about, you know, that's quite of a drop off there. And I might maybe be able to go over there, but you can see someone else did it and slid. But it's just like you get to these places. Now these, these three that I've just done wasn't actually near as bad as the ones prior. where you would be tiptoeing and sliding all over the place because the ground is saturated and it's like mush you know it's Kentucky it's clay soil and sand the rocks are really slick my knee is killing me and I've got about six more miles to get to camp where I made really good time up until one o'clock. Once I crossed that river though, man, it's just been horrible since. But I'm going to make it. I'm going to uh, update a little later. If anything changes, I hear rain starting to come down again. It's stopped for like 15 minutes. So uh, time to grab the umbrella again. So in the previous video, I talked about how these mud puddles are like the whole width of the road. This is a good example. This is the way most of them are. So on this side, you've got a bank uphill. You can't really go that side. And then on this side, you got maybe foot, foot and a half width to get around it and some of them are even much narrower so you can see the bank on that side and then this side this is number two for the day I'm about half afraid to be holding on to this camera And my feet are already soaked, so it ain't going to matter one bit. My feet have been wet now for about five, six hours. Hopefully I don't fall. The current's actually a lot stronger than it looks. It's about... Mid knee high.
And I'll be honest with you, that cold water actually felt good on my feet. Shoot, that is some super cold water. So this is Horse Lick Creek, which is the third ford for today. The rain stopped about 30 minutes ago. My feet are already soaked, so it ain't going to make a difference to ford one more with my shoes on. This will make number four for the day my shoes are still wet from the muscle creek so might as well just pick a spot and go right here looks good huh that wasn't too bad I think I got about three more miles to camp, give or take. And it's about 5.30. So, I'll update you later. So, in the northbound through hiker manual, it talks about a great camp with a fire pit on creek, lots of spots, and great waterfall at 134.36. Now, this book was written before they did the extension down to burnt mill bridge so over there is the fire pit i was going to pass this up and as i was walking on the road i saw this waterfall and i thought you know as as horrible as today has been with all the rain and my feet soaked and literally the whole entire trail today has been forest service roads and gravel roads and asphalt roads I better at least make one decent presentation for the day and well right there it is I would have thought with all the rain it would have been much bigger but we'll take that I don't know how many this makes that I've uh, crossed today. This one is at 134.54. I don't know, it's like five. Five for the day. Water looks shallower over here. Uh. That cold water actually feels good on my feet, even though they've been wet all day. So uh, I'll update you when I get to camp. About two, two and a half more miles.